The curious incident of the dock in the night time is a Manhattan novel narrated by first-person narrator Christopher. Christopher is a 15-year-old boy who suffers from Asperger's syndrome, who lives in Swindon with his father and his pet rat, Toby. His father has told him that his mother has died of a heart attack. One day, seven minutes past midnight, Christopher is walking in the neighbourhood. He spots Mrs. Shea's slain dog lying on the grass with the garden fork sticking out of its body. Christopher goes towards the garden, opens the gates, enters and takes the fork out of the, of the dog and hogs the dog. Two officers, a man and a woman, get into the garden too. The woman knocks on Mrs. Shear's door and the man stays with Christopher. He asks him many questions like what his name is, how old he is and whether he killed the dog. Christopher knows the answers to all those questions, but he is asked many questions at the same time and he is not given enough time to answer. He starts to become agitated. He lies on the grass, curves into a ball and starts screaming. The officer does not know about his condition, so he tries to touch him and on that moment Christopher pushes the police officer away. The police officer thinks it is assault against authority and he takes Christopher to the precincts where he puts him in a cell. Christopher, as soon as Christopher gets into the cell, he starts to think about the geometry of the cell. Christopher loves mathematics. He's very good at math. He solves mathematical problems for fun, but he doesn't like communication. He thinks that people communicate in bizarre ways and it is very hard to read people's emotions and facial expressions. After a few moments, Christopher's father comes to the precinct to recuperate his son. The officers let him do so, but have him promise that his son would not cause any further problems. As soon as Christopher gets home, he decides he wants to investigate the murder of Wellington the dog. He takes his Swiss knife and goes out to the crime scene, because he knows that crime scenes are always full of information. He wants to question Mrs. Shears, but as soon as she sees him, she starts screaming because she thinks it is him who has killed the dog. He runs away and thinks that the killer could be one of three. Either it is a crazy person or somebody who hates dogs or somebody who hates Mrs. Shears and wants to get back at her through harming her dog. He also thinks that there are no crazy people in the neighbourhood and he doesn't know anybody who hates dogs. And Mrs. Shears lives alone. There is no Mr. Shears. In fact, she is a friend of the family. She used to spend time at his house and she used to prepare food for him and for his father. She has even spent nights at his house. And he has always wondered why she would spend nights at his house, especially that her home is at a stone's throw. Christopher goes back home happy with the progress he has made in the investigation and he tries to tell his father about it. But as soon as his father hears Mr. Shears, he starts screaming and becomes furious. He hits the table very violently and he commands Christopher never to utter the name Mr. Shears at home again. Then Christopher thinks about how being an astronaut could be the best job for him. He loves science, he's very good at math and he would love to work and live in a spaceship because there mustn't be lots of yellow and orange in a spaceship and those are the two colours Christopher hates. It is as if Christopher is mad at his father because he has commanded him to give up the investigation. But he doesn't understand this feeling so he creates a situation where he thinks of a perfect job a job that would allow him to be away from the command of his father. When he goes to school, Christopher shows his book to his favourite teacher, Mrs. Chauvin. She reads it and congratulates him on it and tells him that he should be proud of his book. But he tells her that his father has forbidden him from pursuing the case because he has forbidden him from uttering the name Mr. Shears and Mr. Shears is his primary suspect. Christopher goes to a special needs school. He hates his classmates. He thinks they're all stupid. He's smarter than all of them. And he thinks that the name School for Special Needs is not a good name because 
His teacher, Siobhan, has special needs too. She wears very thick glasses, so she needs those glasses to read and nobody calls her somebody who has special needs. He has another teacher who wears a hearing aid device. She too needs that device to hear. The notion of normality is flawed. Everybody has needs, but certain people are labelled people with special needs, while others, despite their apparent special needs, are thought of as normal. Christopher has a technique of looking at red and yellow cars to know how good or how bad a day is going to be. And on that day, he gets into the school bus and on the way, he looks through the window and he sees four yellow cars, which is terrible. Yellow cars always presage that the day is going to be bad. The following day, he gets into the school bus and looks through the window and sees four other yellow cars, which means that that day too was going to be awful. The following day, he decides not to look through the window because he doesn't want to see yellow cars again. We can infer that Christopher looks for yellow cards to justify his sadness because we know he is sad. His father has just forbidden him from pursuing the investigation and he justifies this sadness. He cannot link the way he's feeling to what his father has told him, so he creates something more tangible that could justify his feeling. On the fifth day, Christopher looks again through the window and he sees five red cars, which means it is going to be a fantastic day. As soon as he gets out of the school bus, he runs to the local shop to buy some sweets. There he meets Mrs. Alexander, a very friendly neighbour. He doesn't know whether to ask her or not about Mr. She's because his father has told him not to speak about Mr. She's again. But he thinks that his father has forbidden him from speaking about Mr. She's at home. And he is not at home, he is at a shop. So he has every right to ask Mrs. Alexander about Mr. She's. And he does. She answers him that Mr. She's and his father don't like each other. They hate each other because Mr. She's has had an affair with Christopher's mother. Christopher is shocked by that news. He gets out of the shop and runs back home. He doesn't tell anything to his father. He writes everything in his book though. And he goes to the garden and starts looking at the sky. He looks at clouds and thinks that some clouds look like spaceships, other clouds look like aliens. He is saying that things do not look what they are. A thing can be something and look another. He also thinks about his favourite novel, a Sherlock Holmes novel entitled The Hound of Baskervilles. In that story, everybody thinks it is a hound that has killed a victim, but Sherlock Holmes finds out that it is a dog that some people have disguised as a hound. This is another indication that Christopher thinks things do not look what they are. It is as if Christopher thinks in compartment and he doesn't establish a link between what he feels. When he goes to school, he shows his book again to his teacher, Mrs. Chauvin, who reads it and gets a little concerned about the bit where he writes about his mother's affair with Mr. Shays. She asks him about it, but he tells her that he doesn't care about that because it is senseless to care about people or things that do not exist anymore. And his mother has died. She does not exist anymore. When he goes home, he turns on TV and starts watching a documentary. His father gets home too. He takes his son's book and reads it. It infuriates him. He comes screaming at Christopher. He scolds him very violently and he hits him. Christopher blacks out and when he wakes up, he finds blood all over his hands, bruises in his neck and his head hurts. He doesn't understand very well what has happened. The following day, his father apologises to him for hitting him and promises him he would take him to the zoo. But his father has hidden his book. The following day, Christopher looks for his book everywhere, but he doesn't find it until he goes to his father's bedroom and opens a shirt's box. There, he finds his book together with a lot of letters with his name on them. He takes one and goes to his bedroom and reads it. It is a letter from his mother and he reproduces it exactly as it is, full of spelling mistakes. 
Now, those spelling mistakes could denote what kind of person his mother is. She doesn't have a very good education. And in the letter, she tells him that she has found a new job as a secretary at a factory. And she asks him why he's not responding to her letters. He doesn't know what to think. He thinks maybe the, this letter was written before her death. But he checks the date on the letter and it is a handful of days after her supposed death. He even thinks it's a letter to somebody else, not directed to him, from somebody else, not his mother. He doesn't really know what to think. The following day, he tiptoes to his father's bedroom, takes all the letters and brings them to his bedroom. He discovers that his mother was very miserable because it was very hard raising him, especially with his condition. She also used to have a lot of arguments with his father. She was in a relationship with Mr. Shears, who too didn't like his wife. So they both decided to leave Swindon and to go live in London. All this shakes him. He blacks out again, and when he wakes up, he finds his father in his bedroom. His father knows that Christopher has read all the letters. He bathes him takes care of him and decides to have a conversation with him. He apologises to him for lying about his mother's death and he confesses to Christopher that he has killed Wellington. He explains to him that he was in a relationship with Mrs. Shears and that they had an argument and in the midst of the arguments Mrs. Shears dog attacked him so he took a garden fork and stabbed the dog with it. This is the thing that shakes Christopher the most. He decides he doesn't want to live with his father anymore. He takes his Swiss knife, gets out of the house and decides to go to London to meet his mother. He also takes his father's ATM bank card to pay for the train ticket. Christopher goes through a lot of trouble getting to London. As soon as he steps in the train station, he is overwhelmed because the way Christopher deals with new environments is that he tries to look at the place, memorize everything and make the place his. He, tried to, he tries to do that with the train station, but there are lots of shops, lots of signs, too many people and those people touch him on his shoulders and this makes him feel very uncomfortable. When he gets to London, he uses the address written on the envelope to know exactly where his mother's and Mr. Shea's home is. He gets there, he tries to look for cars uh, to see if it is going to be a good experience uh, talking to his mother. He tries to see whether he's going to find yellow cars or red cars, but he doesn't find any cars. And this is exactly how he is feeling. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how his mother is going to greet him, whether it's going to be something good or bad. As soon as his mother sees him, she is happy. She greets him. She invites him in. She prepares food for him. She's very happy to have him in. But moments later, his father, together with a police officer, arrive at Mr. Shea's home. His father starts screaming and the police officer intervenes and asks Christopher directly whether he wants to go back to Swindon with his father or to stay with his mother. Christopher doesn't hesitate to answer that he wants to stay with his mother. His father goes back home. Christopher's mother takes a leave from work to take good care of his son. She takes him out, she buys things for him, but Mr. Shears is bothered by his presence. He tells Christopher's mother that Christopher must not stay with them for long. She tells him that she wants to reunite with the son and she's not going to abandon him again. Christopher too tells his mother that he needs to go back to Swindon because he needs to take an A-level math test. She tells him that they cannot go back to Swindon. She calls the school principal, Mrs. Gascoigne, and it turns out there is a possibility to postpone the test to the following year. His mother tells him that, and this makes him angry because he doesn't want to postpone the test. He wants to take it this year. Mr. Shays still puts pressure on Christopher's mother and tells her every day that he doesn't want to have Christopher around. 
One day, she takes Mr. Shea's car and drives back to Swindon with Christopher. They go to his father's home, and when his father arrives, he starts screaming with the mother. Christopher is in his bedroom, and as soon as he hears his father's voice, he uses his bed to block the door. He doesn't want to speak to his father or to have anything to do with his father. Christopher's father leaves the house and stays at his friend's Rodri for a whole week. During that week, Christopher and his mother live in the house. Christopher goes back to school and learns that he still can't take the A-level math test. He takes it and he scores a perfect A in that test. He's very happy. After one week, his father comes back to his home and asks Christopher's mother to leave. She manages to find a job in Swindon and she rents an apartment. She goes there together with Christopher and Christopher hates the apartment because it is very small. The beds are in the kitchen and they have to share the toilet with other tenants. And he must go to his father's home when he finishes school because his mother does not clock out until 5.30. So he stays at his father's home until 5.30 when his mother gets to pick him up and take him to the new small apartment. In the meantime, Toby, the rat, dies of old age. Christopher puts him in a plastic bag and buries him in his father's garden. His father uses this opportunity to buy Christopher a dog. Christopher accepts the gifts and starts to talk again to his father. He names the dog Sandy. Christopher decides to take other A-level tests in math and physics. He hopes he would be able to go study at university in a different city. He thinks it's going to be hard to live alone away from his father and his mother, but he has proven himself. He has solved the mystery of the murderer of the dog, he has phoned his mother, and he has written a great book. Now this video has reached its end. If you liked it, thumb it up. If you disliked it, thumb it down. What do you think matters? You might also want to subscribe for future videos. And until we meet again, have a great day.